What's going on guys? Evan here, bringing another Dark Souls gameplay commentary on the Xbox 360. This is another installment of my Ellie series of videos, and I'll cut with the elaboration on that on this video because, wow, I am sick of commentating the catacombs. This will be part three of the catacombs, but this will be the last time we're commentating the catacombs, other than when I commentate leaving the catacombs. Um, I did miss a couple items, which I'll catch in the last installment of the video, which will be leaving the catacombs, which... I look forward to commentating. This video will show you right at the start how to reach the blacksmith, which wasn't included in the other spot, uh, other parts, how to get the cleric's armor set, how to defeat Pinwheel, and how to get to the first bonfire in the Tomb of the Giants. That's all we're really going to do here. I'm looking forward to getting this one over with. Um, thank you for you know giving me your audience for the uh, commentaries, particularly everyone that's watched this entire series so far, or at least at bare minimum through the Catacomb Saga, because I, know you guys, I didn't like commentating it. As for reaching the blacksmith, do as I do. This is the safest way to jump down. If you have slow fall or a ton of life, you can actually straight jump it. Or try to ride the wall down, but either way, I don't recommend it. That's how you get all the items on the way down. That's the safe way. That's the easy way. Just do it that way, and everything will be fine. Um, I died three or four times trying to figure out those jumps out, because I kept trying to do like rolls and running jumps and complicated things like that, when really all I had to do was fall with style, like Buzz Lightyear. Um... I'm going to go ahead and make a fire weapon while I'm here. I figured I'd show you guys my fire weapon sidearm. This character will carry probably four or five weapons in her inventory at all times to deal with different situations and things like that. And I was one tantonite shard short, so I had to go ahead and buy one from the vendor, and he price gouges you for sure. But no big, no big. Um, <laughs> we're going to go ahead and ascend this now because the fire branch starts at plus five regular weapon. So that's ascended, and now we reinforce it up to plus five fire and that's all I can do until I locate the uh, large fire emblem or the large chaos ember. Uh, you don't actually need to give him a fire ember ever because he automatically knows how to do fire weapons he must already have in his possession so he's easily the least friendly blacksmith he does not want you around but he won't hostile you and that's pretty much it. I'll pull. Uh, it's good to have a fire weapon for the boss up ahead because this boss is incredibly weak to fire I wind up not using my fire weapon only because, you know, I already have my Pyromancer's Flame ascended to plus five, so it's already a monster. I'm just having a little peek at that cleric setup there. I know how to get to that, and that'll be right after the pinwheel boss fight. Like I said, I had to do a little bit of editing because I sort of screwed up my path through here. Um, I'm not. I had debated whether I was going to commentate the actual fight with pinwheel, but I figured I might as might as well go ahead and keep it silent because it's that easy. So, I'm going to go silent and let you guys watch the boss fight. He's down in this little, weird little nook. Alright, I'll talk to you guys soon. And I'm back. Uh, Pindle's incredibly weak to fire, so having a fire weapon or a Pyromancer's Flame really trivializes that boss fight. And to reach the Cleric set down here and this soul, 
it's pretty easy. Um, you just have to know where to jump from the Tomb of the Giants, or I'm sorry, not the Tomb of the Giants, from the area I previously showed you where you reach the Grave Lord's Covenant through that, like, those tomb fancy looking walls. Um, outside of that room, um, where you fought the Tantanite Demon, if you backtrack from there, you'll come to a big canyon. Um, that's at the bottom of the canyon, so you can drop down from a ledge. You can look down and see it, and sometimes people put blood stains. It's or uh, you know they communicate with the orange soapstone. It's not hard to do as long as you know where you're dropping from. So if you don't want to bother, you're just missing on the cleric set. That's that's really nothing too exciting. Um, this is heavily edited. This is you'll notice we have zero souls at this point. This is because I died down here because it's dangerous as hell. This is one of the most dangerous, if not the most dangerous area in the game. It's pitch black. You need one of three items to see what you're doing. Uh, cast light, the magic spell, or um, a skull lantern dropped by the necromancers, or acquired down in the Tomb of the Giants. And lastly, a sunlight maggot helm, which you get in Lost Azaleoth much later in the game. So, you know, really annoying place, because the problem with the skull lantern, which is the one I have access to, and the one you can probably get access to the quickest, assuming you're not an intelligence caster, um, I have to carry the lamp, so I can't have my shield up, and these guys can be kind of tough without a shield. So I'm trying to get to my bloodstain desperately. There's like 28 maybe humanity sitting on that bloodstain, and well, I wouldn't like reset my character if I lost that. I'd be pretty upset. This is really, in my opinion, the toughest and probably the last area worth coming to in the game. I just came here early so I could get um, the large divine ember. Spoiler alert: will be the next installment, and I needed the large divine ember to get the correct weapon on this character and. There's miracles down here I wanted, and lastly, to get the best miracles in the game, you have to come down here, so. Really, I came here prematurely, but it worked out in the end, because I got access to a lot of things I wanted. Um, this video is going to show you how to reach the first bonfire. You're not going to miss any valuable items. Everything valuables after patches will be in the next and some of the Tomb of the Giants, which, you know, that, that I'm looking forward to commentating. That won't be nearly as bad. Um... This place is weird as hell. The enemies down here are bizarre, the entire area is bizarre, and it's just not my favorite place in the world to go. I think it's neat. The lava down there is the only source of light in the whole tomb, and that's actually the demon ruins, which you can reach much earlier, ironically, than you can reach this place. There's an item over there on that corpse I'll get later. You actually grab that on your way out of here, which will easily be the best part of this commentary ever, because... I don't I don't like areas in any games that are like below ground. They're kinda neat, I guess. Like it's neat for like role play or whatever, or like environment immersion, I guess, but no way. This guy likes the lush, pretty uh, scenery of the outdoors and the sunlight. Now in real life I might be I might enjoy this place a little bit more, but video game Evan likes uh pretty things, I guess. Uh I like I just don't like lack of sight in video games. I like to be able to see where I'm going, I like to see what I'm doing. Things that involve flashlights and torches and things like that, they're neat, but they tend to just annoy me. Don't overthink it. There's a lot of little side jumps you can take, but none of them take anything like unique or valuable. I'm looking around because I'm making sure I'm not missing anything for you guys because I've already heavily edited this clip and I don't want to edit it anymore. But no worries. Um, reaching the bonfire really is just following those prism stones. If you don't have a lantern, you can still reach the first bonfire, which is roughly where the first... Um, uh, the first bonfire is pretty close to where you get the Skull Lantern, so reaching the first uh, bonfire should be your priority, and I'm playing incredibly cautiously because I fell off a ledge or something, and I need my blood stain. i got to make my way down to it. Um, I tried to jump. I didn't really try to jump down, but I got surrounded by these big skeleton dudes, and I, all my stamina was depleted, so I took my chances and jumped down a ledge to try to get away. It didn't work, and it's probably never a good idea because you might just die and put your blood stain in a really lousy spot which is what I did, so I have to move really carefully because, you know, like I said, 30 humanity, easily replaceable, but not something I particularly want to have to replace, not to mention probably enough souls for a couple levels, and this character will desperately need level ups once she gets the upcoming miracles in the next installment of the uh, commentary series. I apologize it took me so long to get through the commentary, uh, the catacombs with these commentaries. I know I've apologized a couple times before, but it just really bothers me. I feel like this is probably the the low point of my walkthrough, and hopefully we won't struggle like this anywhere else, but uh, maybe you guys like to see that I struggle with this game too. 
But thankfully, we're approaching the end. I'm about to get to my blood stain. I don't know why I'm running back and forth. I think I'm considering... Yeah, I was considering trying to jump back down to the ledge I was at before. Oops, push that guy's sword off the ledge. This doesn't really matter. Ultimately, I decide to just proceed forward the normal way. Um, because I don't think I can make the drop and live. Which actually works out really well, because... Uh, my blood stain actually turns out to be down here. Um, where I didn't realize it, because, you see, I pulled out my shield the minute I landed. Which was kind of crappy, but it's what happened, so... I pulled out my shield the minute I landed, and I didn't know where I actually landed, because I didn't have my lamp out. But, fortunately, I actually landed right over here on this enormous, um... Sarcophagus, I guess? This enormous, uh, tombstone sarcophagus thing, and I found my blood stain over here, and... It's all okay. Because I landed on this little ledge over here, which was a pretty sweet jump, had I had it been intentional. Uh, you don't want to drop down that hole. I'll elaborate that on the next video, but that hole is death. It's probably one of the most dangerous areas in the game, particularly if you go in unprepared, as I would have and I do later. <laughs> but in any case, up ahead here is the first bonfire. Um, right when you drop down, you're going to see patches. Uh, he's going to trick you into falling in a hole, just like in Demon Souls, and I'll show you that in the next gameplay commentary. But, in the meantime, we'll wrap things up here by... Oops! A little glitch in the video, I had to fix that, sorry. Um, that actually wasn't an edit, that was just a glitch in my video. I don't know what happened there. Stupid hop -hodge PVR. Doesn't work right. Anyway, right down the ladder here is the bonfire, and I keep clicking on the blood stain instead of hitting the ladder. Anyway, guys, as always, thanks for watching, and stick with me. I hope you like this commentary series.